This Weem amp, Weem amp, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, was loaned to me by the manufacturer. That was at my request. See, the deal is that when I review speakers, a lot of times the budget speakers can sound great with just a little bit of EQ. But when I recommend these things and I say with equalization, the problem is that you guys probably don't have access to equalization unless you're spending a good bit more money. Something like a mini DSP where you can run the speakers active would allow you to do that, but then you're gonna need an external amp. You just can't power them off and integrated. The other problem is that with AVRs, you really don't have the luxury of going in and fine tuning the equalization if you set up for room EQ. But with something like this, it gives me the ability to say, hey, these speakers, if you have this little guy, then here's what I recommend. And that is exactly why I requested to review this thing. Because number one, I wanted to see, does it really live up to the hype? For 300 bucks, it's hard for it not to, okay? The only issue that I find is that the power is a little bit limited depending on you and your speakers. Now, before I get into that, what I wanna note is a couple of things. This hard body, aluminum shell, it's really great build quality. I also like that it has HDMI input with arc capability. So I actually had this plugged up to my Apple TV, no problem. As soon as I powered it on, everything flipped on, powered my speakers just fine. It's got a subwoofer output as well as line inputs. And the overall cool thing about this little guy is that you can control a lot of these features via an app on your phone. So as you're sitting there in your seated position, you can play with equalization. You can see what sounds good. You can connect an external subwoofer and take the load off of your mains and play with where you wanna set that crossover frequency. And if you've got a boost or a room mode that is just driving you nuts, you can go in with the EQ, bring that down a little bit. It's super, super easy to use. But as I said, I think the thing that most of you are gonna run into is, is this amplifier adequate in power? Let me give you my situation. Apple TV running into this HDMI. Polk R500 towers with a sensitivity of about 85 decibels. And then I had a few different other speakers around that I was listening to ranging from 85 to 88 decibels. I will tell you that at about 10 feet away in a room size of about 14 by 18 feet with nine foot ceilings, I wanted more power. Now for most of the music that I listen to, it's pretty good dynamic range. I would say about eight to 14 decibels of dynamic range, which means that most of the music nowadays is pretty compressed. You might have three decibels of dynamic range, but that's gonna be about it. If you look at the music that I listen to where there's more dynamic range, that means it's just not inherently louder on its own. So I need additional output capability to get to levels that I typically want to get to. In my seated position at 10 feet away, the maximum output that I could get for average would be about 85 decibels. For some people, that is perfectly adequate. And that is, yes, certainly on the louder end of things. But when I test this stuff, I need to know what to tell you. Is it gonna be loud enough for you? I would say that if you have a small to medium sized room, and I consider my living room 18, 14, nine feet, medium sized, if you have a small to medium size, you're probably gonna be okay. But if you exceed the dimensions that I just mentioned and or you're further than 10 feet away, you might find that you want more power and then you would need to step up to a larger amplifier that just doesn't come in this size package with the features that it does for $300. Looking through my comments, I noticed a lot of you saying that you use these in your bedroom and I think that makes perfect sense. Typically in a bedroom, you're not gonna be cranking it up super loud or it's gonna be a little bit of a smaller room. And in that case, this thing makes perfect sense. Matter of fact, I'm actually gonna buy one myself for that exact purpose. I mean, when you've got all these features built into it, such as streaming, HDMI input, an app that controls EQ and subwoofer, it's a no brainer, 300 bucks, buy it. If you have a large room, don't buy it. It's not for you. You're gonna to have to go get something else. Earlier this week, I posted the question, what do you all wanna know about this product in my review? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read off some questions and I'm gonna answer them as best I can. Not all of them, but I'm kind of picking and choosing a few of them that I think that most of you are gonna be interested as well in. Does it sound good like a high performance amp? Okay, well, 
I'm not going to say all amps sound the same. I, I'm not. I'm not fully there, but I think a lot of people worry too much about the sound of different amplifiers, unless you're talking about an amplifier that was intended to sound different. But what I can tell you is that when I level matched the speaker output at my seated position with the Weem amp versus the NADC 3050, I didn't notice any difference. However, the NADC 3050 can get a lot louder does sound more full in the bass, but I think that's just because of our susceptibility to lower frequency output. At low volume, you don't really hear a lot of bass output, but at higher volume, you do. So that would really be my explanation for that. How does this amplifier handle harder to drive speakers? Okay, so I would say a harder to drive speaker would be one that has low sensitivity or just a really complex crossover network where the impedance is overall really low. In that regard, I go back to what I said earlier, where if you have a lower sensitivity speaker, it's not gonna get as loud. That really is what this all culminates in. If you are in a small to medium sized room with typical bookshelf speakers at about 85 decibels or so, then you're probably gonna be okay. If you're in a larger room or you have speakers that are lower sensitivity, you're not gonna be okay and you're simply gonna to have to look for something that has more power. This is an important one, wife acceptance factor or how easy is it to use for people who aren't really familiar with these kind of things? Well, of course I'm biased because I'm familiar with how to use these things, but I'll tell you that in my opinion, it is incredibly easy. I downloaded the app. I set the thing up. It detects it automatically over Wi-Fi. Boom. You've got everything on the app. You've got your source. You've got equalization. You've got subwoofer output. All the features that are built into this can be found on the app and it's super duper easy to use. As far as connectivity goes, I connected it to my Apple TV via HDMI. I was off. My Apple TV remote controls the volume on this guy just fine. Some reviews point out what appears to be limited dynamics. Well, now I'm back to talking about power. See, I think that most other reviewers don't really have a strong concept of the relationship between sensitivity of speakers, power, room size, and listening distance. All of these things matter. So when you hear somebody say something like 90 decibels, the first thing you need to ask them is at what distance? So to answer the question again, it's expectation. What's the sensitivity of your speaker? How far are you listening? What's the size of your room? And if you are running a four ohm or lower impedance, yeah, you might get additional power out, but don't expect this thing to knock your socks off. It's a small class D amplifier, which again, sounds fine. It's just not gonna deliver a ton of power. Rated output is about 120 watts at four ohm and about 60 watts at eight ohm. And my testing driving both channels with multi-tone signal showed that what happens is as you increase from lower volume at about two watts to the highest output volume, which is supposed to be 120, when you listen to multi-tone, you can achieve about 90 watts of output with multi-tone, but with a single tone, you can achieve about 120 watts. So that really kind of changes things and it does indicate that there is potentially some concern with overall power output. But I think for the price that you're paying, as long as you're reasonable about your expectation, you're gonna be fine. Just don't get in a large room. Would I buy it personally and use it as my only amplifier? No, my room's too big. The speakers that I use, they're not super high sensitivity. I want more power. I want at least 10 decibels more than I think I need. So if I'm targeting 85 decibels, I need the amplifier to be able to deliver 95 decibels of output. Now that's me. I am still gonna buy this thing because I wanna put it in a bedroom setup because it's better than a sound bar. And like I said, it's got equalization so I can go through there and mess with things. I can add a small subwoofer super duper easily. For about 800 bucks, you can have a killer system. I've had a few questions about the USB input. Unfortunately, I don't have a USB device with music loaded on it at this point in time. And finally, does it get hot? No, I had this thing on the test bench for hours, hours playing all sorts of test tones, singular, multi-tone test tones. It got warm, it never got hot and it never exhibited any sort of thermal shutdown. It never clipped on its own, I actually had to drive it into clipping to figure out what the maximum output would really be. So overall, as far as it staying stable, yeah, that's not an issue. I did do a number of tests on this amplifier 
And I'm gonna walk through some of those rather quickly. If you wanna see the full litany of tests that I've done, you can find them at my website, aaronsaudiocorner.com. The first test we're gonna talk about is load dependency. So what I use is static 8 ohm and 4 ohm. I did not test two because the manufacturer does not rate it for that. And I just didn't wanna risk potentially damaging it with a two ohm load. I also test with what is called a reactive load. Now this reactive load, I have two of them. I have one that's complex and one that's simple. The complex one is closer to eight ohm. The simple one is closer to four ohm, but they are done and built to act like real speakers. And this is probably the best way that anybody can determine how an amplifier is gonna behave with a real speaker without me blowing my eardrums out or blowing the speaker up. There is load dependency. And load dependency means does a frequency response of the amplifier change depending on the load that it's driving. A good amplifier won't change at all. It'll be perfectly flat from 10 Hertz to 20 kilohertz or something like that. I mean, it'll be perfectly flat, no change. Keep in mind the scale here is at about plus and minus three dB. So you are zoomed in a little bit, but I really wanna point out the difference here between these different loads. At eight ohm in red, there's about plus six dB at 20 kilohertz. At four ohm in blue, there's about minus one dB or so at four ohm at 20 kilohertz. Are you going to hear that? Potentially, potentially. I would err on the side that says you're probably not gonna notice it at all, but there is a potential that you would. Now we look at the complex and the simple loads. The simple load is green and there is some waviness to it. And it goes up to one dB at about 16 kilohertz. It kind of dips around five to six kilohertz, a little bit of a half dB peak at around uh, two to three kilohertz right in this region. That's interesting. Might you hear that? Potentially. What about the complex load that simulates more of a complex speaker that has a little bit harder to drive sensitivity and load? Well, that's in orange and we can see that that one behaves kind of interestingly. So this broader peak right through here of about 0.75 decibels or so between uh, three kilohertz to about 16 kilohertz, that's gonna lift up that top end. It's almost one decibel, it's over half a decibel. I think out of anything that you're likely to hear, this one is probably going to be it. So it could theoretically sound like a brighter speaker if you have a more complex load. On the simple load, which is probably gonna be similar to more, maybe like two-way type loads, two-way bookshelf speakers. I don't know if you're really gonna hear that as much, but you might potentially hear the higher frequency bouncing here. This is the frequency response of the subwoofer output and playing around with the different crossovers. So the minimum you can set it to is 30 Hertz. And then the maximum you can set it to is about 250 Hertz, but this just shows you the electrical filter going on inside of the wheel. The subwoofer output voltage is 1.93. That's reference to maximum volume where I was able to achieve the manufacturer's spec. This is THD versus power for the eight, four, simple and complex loads. You can see that for the four ohm and the complex load, you get about 120 Hertz or so. And then the distortion just skyrockets. Basically, this is your maximum output capability and it matches up with the manufacturers. For eight ohm and the simple load, you're at about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 to 65 watts. Again, matches up with the manufacturer spec. And just another graphical example of what you can do with the EQ. So in this case, I used a high shell filter above about three kilohertz and then a notch filter at 700 hertz, just to show you, hey, here's an example of two bands of EQ. Now here's the test that I think that you're gonna find interesting. I set the output to be about 2.7 watts. And I, I just, honestly, I just chose that kind of haphazardly. I wanted it to be a low wattage, but not so low that it's in the noise, okay? This is with a one kilohertz tone. Now I'm gonna compare this to multi-tone using the same input voltage that you see right through here. What is the output going to be? That's what I wanna know. Here you go. Same input voltage. Output is basically the exact same thing, 2.7 watts. So. 2.7 watts with a single tone or multi-tone with the same input voltage. Cool. Now the trick, okay? Max volume, one kilohertz tone. What happens when I go to multi-tone? So let's look at the one kilohertz tone. First. So the next test was referenced at 1% THD. I had to give this thing 2.2 volts input. 
to achieve about 128, 129 watts at four ohms. Now using this same voltage input, what happens when I feed this thing a discrete multi-tone source? Here you go. Same input voltage, but 90 watts. So we lose roughly 30 watts of output when we provide this thing with complex signal like music. Now this might, might explain why some people complain about the output capability of this amplifier. 30 watts to me is very interesting. Does this happen with all amplifiers? Well, I've got another amplifier on hand that is pretty good. I can tell you that it doesn't happen with that. The amplifier maintains the output power at one kilohertz and it loses maybe a watt or two with full multi-tone signal. So I don't think that this is common, but I don't know that it's not terribly uncommon. So stick with me. I'm gonna perform this same kind of test for all future amplifier tests. I find it interesting and possibly able to explain why some people feel like the amplifier doesn't drive their speakers to a loud enough output level. Okay, that wraps it up for this review. This is my first electronics review ever. To be honest with you, I tried to cover all the bases, but I know that I'm probably missing some things that you're interested in. Maybe I'm missing them because I don't have the means to provide them. Maybe I didn't cover it in this review, but they're mentioned on my website. Make sure you check that out. But if you have any comments, please let me know what they are. Ultimately, what I will say is this. You've heard me say this many times before. This is a great product. I am going to use it myself in my bedroom. I am not going to use this in my living room because it doesn't provide me enough output capability with the speakers that I have on hand. If I had speakers that were 90 decibel sensitivity and I was sitting 10 feet away, I would probably be okay. But because they're around 85 decibels, which is pretty common for most speakers, and the room is 18 by 14 by about nine, the room is a little bit too large, the sensitivity is a little bit too low for the power that this amplifier provides in that particular room. If you are interested in buying the speaker, speaker, see I did it again. If you are interested in buying this amplifier, please consider using my affiliate link below to crutchfield.com or Amazon, either one. It doesn't change the data. Hopefully I've given you enough to go on and help you decide, yes, this makes sense for me or no, it doesn't make sense for me. But personally, I would appreciate it if you would use that link because it helps me keep doing what I'm doing. With all that said, I will talk to you all on the next one. Take care, peace.